Hello, my name is Nicholas and welcome to another episode of Programming Concepts. In today's short video, we're going to have a look at pure functions. To illustrate concepts related to this, we're going to have some code examples and those examples will be in Java. For a function to be pure, it has to meet two requirements. First of all, the result uh, can depend only on the input given to it, so it can't depend on any kind of external state. And secondly, there can be no side effects. This means that we can't be modifying any state or, or, uh, or interacting with a, with a database or anything like that. Let's take, for example, this, uh, this class rectangle here that has two fields, width and height, uh, uh, just a regular constructor. And then it has this method area here that returns an integer. Uh, it's going to return uh, width times height. And as you can see, this method area here is, is the, the opposite of a pure function, really. It depends on the state of, or it's, it depends on the the instance of rectangle that it that it's attached to. So this this is this doesn't even take any input. Yeah, it only depends on the state of that rectangle object that you call it against. This is illustrated here uh, by by having this method area that produces a result or an output, uh, but depends on the state of rectangle. In contrast, uh, a pure function. Really, the, the, the key thing, output and result depend only on the inputs. So we can have here this f of x and y, or in other words, a function called area that takes, uh, that takes an integer width and an integer height. And the, the output is going to depend only on that. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's easy to see that this method is very testable. We don't really have to understand the context around it that well. We just have... Uh, we just have something called area that, that, that takes two integers and that returns an integer. Uh, it's very simple. It depends on nothing outside of it, uh, only, only on the input given to it. In Java, we can, uh, we can put the, this, the static here in front of these kinds of functions or, well, well yeah, functions that, uh, that um, don't depend on the instance of the object. Also, the, this does some optimization with the compiler uh, when you say static, and it also won't let you refer to to any kind of instance variables. You can still call, for example, some uh, some static variable, and in that way refer to uh, to external state. You can still write to database in here or or uh, create side effects. So static doesn't guarantee that uh, in Java that's a pure function. But uh, using it does guarantee that you can't call instance variables, uh, at least in, in, uh, in the context of that, uh, that function. And so to reiterate regarding the side effects, it does mean that we cannot interact with the, uh, with the database, we can't write to files, read from files, uh, we can't really make HTTP calls, that's maybe debatable, but, but uh, nothing like that. No, nothing that could fail, that uh, could have some random delay or anything, anything useful, really. Uh, and I think that's a, <laughs> that's a core, core kind of um, uh, misunderstanding, maybe with, with the functional, functional style of programming. That it doesn't uh, everything useful. We we usually. Side effects are usually useful things. For, for an application to be useful, we need to interact with a database. We need to modify some state or, or, or um, <laughs> modify data or, or, uh, or store the data. So um, it, it's quite difficult to, uh, to make a useful program without having side effects. And so purely functional programs uh, are usually <laughs> useless. But instead of thinking about it so radically, uh, I think we should think about it more as a functional style of programming. So while the useful programs have side effects, we can still separate the kind of the functional code from the side effect code. And if we do that explicitly, then it's going to be much easier to deal with the more quote-unquote pure functional uh, code in our code base 
and and then uh, treat the treat maybe the side effect code, the ones writing to the d- database and so on, a little bit differently. It makes everything else much easier to test, much uh, much more uh, easier to reason about, and so on. So so instead of thinking about it so radically, we should think about functional programming maybe as a as a style or an approach where we try and separate separate these parts that have side effects uh, and depend on state from the parts that don't. And that's pure functions in a nutshell. The concept is very simple and straightforward to understand. Uh, usually the question is more about how do we apply the the functional style when we're we're solving real world uh, real world problems and and kind of trying to to implement it in as clean a way as possible on the technical side. Thanks for listening and until next time.